Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Financial Advisors Workshop. This is the show where we interview top-ranked financial advisors all across the country so we can learn about their success and how they've done it. Uh, to be a succession in the financial industry um, takes a, a long years of hard work. Uh, it also takes uh, a lot of um, stick to itiveness that many people don't have. And so the folks we're interviewing are the top folks. And Jim Allen is with us today. And Jim is President and Chief Financial Planner with Anchor Bay Capital. And you guys are California folks, Jim, aren't you? Yes, we are. Um, our offices are here in uh, Orange County and in San Diego County in a town called Carlsbad. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, great. Well, welcome. Welcome to our show today. And, uh, you know, Jim, maybe you can get started. You're the boss now, but, you know, tell us how you got started in the business. Like, how'd you get into business and how'd you progress through it? Sure. Well, I, I've been in the business quite a while since the, the mid 80s. And it, it kind of started with, I had no idea financial planning even existed. It, it honestly didn't exist in its current form back then. But uh, I work for a company that you probably would be familiar with being a, you know, a Chicago guy is uh, Scoremart. I was a yeah. store manager for Scoremart. They had opened uh, stores out here in Southern California. And they were an early, ado early adopter of the 401k. Yeah. And so I had all of these employees that like, they had no idea what they were. They, they didn't know how to invest. And so I kind of, by default, had to start providing them advice. And uh, that's how I kind of caught the, the investing bug. My father-in-law always read Money Magazine, so I started reading those. And then that's where I found out about the Certified Financial Planner designation in the professional financial planning. Uh, so while I was still at Sportmart, I started working on the CFP program. Um, and then ultimately transitioned to uh, Prudential, which, you know, back in the 80s, there were really only two paths. Uh, either you were a stockbroker or you work in insurance. So I went the insurance path. And the idea oh. of financial planning back then was you maybe sell a, an, an occasional mutual fund to go with your life insurance and your, you know, your annuities. Um, so, you know, I did that for, for a few years. Uh, got my CFP, and so then I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to just go out on my own, and I'm going to be a fee-only financial planner. This was 1989, and obviously, it was it was a tough path, and it, it didn't mm -hmm. work. Um, back then, you know, custodians like Schwab weren't even really active in the, the market. They had the, the mutual fund store, et cetera. So uh, I tried on my own for a couple of years. It didn't work out, so then I kind of took a career turn and went into uh, what's called advanced markets or advanced planning life insurance companies. And so for 15 years or so, I headed up teams of advanced planners, tax attorneys, CPAs, CFPs, et cetera, and a couple of very right. large insurance companies. So okay. what we, we did was to provide advanced planning for advisors, say at a Merrill Lynch or a Morgan Stanley or an Edward Jones, where they had the client, but they didn't have the expertise. So with myself or someone on our team would go in and we do all this really super sophisticated planning. Um, so I did that for a long time. And, you know, we're, you know, we're helping clients save millions of dollars of estate tax, et cetera. Uh, tax law changes pretty much eliminated that market. And so myself, my whole team were job eliminated. And so I found myself wanting to go back into private practice, which I did um, you know, around 2016. So I started a, a firm with a, uh, a, a partner, and we uh, did that for a couple of years. I, I literally start from scratch, zero clients, um, you know, because all the clients I'd worked with all those years were not mine. And so uh, we started a company called Sterling Wealth Partners um, and did that for a couple of years, started growing that from scratch. And then in 2018, I had a health scare, ended up having to have a triple bypass. Solo practitioner, it's, uh, uh, you know, who's going to take care of my clients? Um, and so that's why I made the decision that I needed to join a larger firm. And that's how I ended up at Anchor Bay Capital. So I joined okay. them five and a half years ago, merged my practice in, um, bought in, became a shareholder. And uh, now I'm, I'm the president of, of the company and uh, you know, the, the largest shareholder. So that's been kind of my long and winding path through this business. But uh, ultimately, I made it back to being a financial planner. Great. 
And that's how you see it now. Your firm is a financial planning firm specifically. We are. We lead with financial planning in every engagement. Uh, so everybody is going to get a financial plan. Uh, Great. And so, you know, we'll, we'll work under asset center management, which is the bread and butter. Uh, but we'll also work under an hourly or subscription or project-based uh, mm -hmm. fee, fee method. But uh, yeah, we're first and foremost financial planning. Our so Jim, in investment management, uh, that's the, our founder of our firm, is primarily investment management, but uh, we've morphed into a full financial planning. So what's your thought on that, Jim? You start, you start with everyone in financial planning. Um, does everybody want financial planning or, or do they, some people say no or how do you? Yeah, we'll get the occasional person. It's like, I just want you to manage the money. And, you know, we, we may make exceptions and, and do that depending on the situation. Okay. Um, but, you know, by the time we, we, you know, go through all their needs and wishes and wants and all of that, uh, look at their tax situation, we can usually uncover a reason why they should be doing top tax. Okay. A lot, a lot of people don't have their estate plans in place. Uh, they don't know how they're going to retire. They, they you know, they, they don't know much about tax planning. And so, I think everybody has the need for a comprehensive plan for the most part. They need, they have a need for advice. Um, and so, yeah, we, we're typically, we don't force them, but we're typically going to say, this is the way we do our best job is to start with knowing your whole financial picture. Can't give you good advice if we don't know what's going on. Yeah. Well, good. So what kind of financial planning uh, do you do? Do you use systems or do you have your own system? And tell me how that works. Yeah, so I mean, we we have a process, a detailed process that we go through. I mean, we use the typical financial planning software. We use both eMoney and, and Money Guide, um, but our financial planning is, um, you know, going through the discovery meeting, getting to know them, getting all the documents, reviewing everything, uh, and then building out the plan, and then doing all the various what if scenarios. Uh, but at the same time. Uh, we also focus heavily on tax. We have a tax firm in addition to our RIA. And so you know, we're going to prepare their tax returns and do heavy tax planning. If they don't have estate documents, we're going to get estate documents in place through uh, various services we have. And so we're going to make sure that everything is covered. And you know, a couple reviews a year. Our planning, we're not going to give them the big, thick book. Um, you know, we pretty much just use e-money. We'll pull the 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 important reports up on the on the TV screen in the office, and then we'll just save those reports to the vault. And most people are happy with that. They don't necessarily want all of those reports. They just want to know they're okay and they're on track and where they need to go. Right. Uh, and so you, you you review that twice a year, is that? Generally twice a year. I mean, it, some clients are they're on cruise control at this point, and you know maybe it's a once a year. But generally, we're going to meet with them during tax season to prepare the return. And then we meet with them at the end of the year to do a portfolio review, make sure all the estate plans up to update, they've taken their R&Ds, all of that kind of stuff. So we try and get everybody on a, a, a two review uh, sequence. Excellent. Excellent. Now, I also know you have a whole alphabet soup of letters, uh, a designation about divorce uh, and other uh, and life underwriting. So tell me about all those distinctions. Yeah, that so that, that kind of started. I started with the CFP. And then, like I said, I, I kind of veered off and went into the what's called advanced markets at life insurance company. So most of the people that do that are attorneys. So I kind of had to keep up with the, the attorneys. So I acquired the alphabet suit, charter life underwriter, charter financial consultant, got a master's degree, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, because I'd be on the phone with an advisor and they'd say, are you an attorney? And they'd, no. So then I'd have to be the attorney and then I would have to answer the questions because the attorneys didn't have the same background that I did. So, I mean, it was kind of just to make up for the fact that I was not an attorney. I gathered all those designations. And now I just, I'm a student of the profession. I like to learn. And so I branched out, like, like you mentioned, I have the certified divorce financial analyst, uh, designation. I have the enrolled agent. So these areas that I've kind of specialized in now have the, these designations, but I just like to stay on top of my game and I require our staff to do the same. And so yeah. know, just accumulated the designations throughout a 37 year career. That's awesome. That's awesome. 
Well, you've been around long enough. You've seen a lot of different trends and you say you started in the eighties. So you probably went through your first crash was crash of 87, probably. Yep. I remember yeah. very, very well. You know, it's, we, uh, it, it was a big deal at the time. It, now it looks like a little blip, but uh, yeah, yeah that, was, that was pretty traumatic. It was. And then we've seen all kinds of good times and bad times. And, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about how you manage through that because Clients kind of get a little crazy. Advisors get crazy. Markets are rough. Tell us a little bit about the financial planning process and how that may help that. Yeah, I, I think that's where the planning really helps because, yeah. you know, we're, we're meeting with them and it's like, hey, you're on track. You're on track. Uh, you know, the money that you need for the near future is in treasuries or money market or whatever. Uh, so your spending's covered. So ignore what's going on with the markets. And, uh, you know, we're, we're dealing with the long-term stuff. And so, you know, we just constantly remind them, it's like, this is the plan. We're sticking to the plan. And, you know, if we need to, to change direction, we, we will. But um, we don't have a lot of, of people freaking out when the market, uh, you know, is, is dropping or whatever, because we kind of train them, like, they ignore it. You know, don't watch CNBC, you know, tune out all the noise and just focus on, on living your life. You know, like you said, I've been through 87, I was through 2000, 2006, 2020. So I've been through a lot of these. And, um, you know, I think that gives some clients confidence that, you know, I, I've seen these before. And I, I kind of know what's, what's going to happen. What's going to happen, right. Well, now that you mentioned, sometimes clients will get on cruise control. They get so comfortable with their process and they know what you're going to say and what you're going to do. And that's really a testament to the process you've created. Um, but then some people go through divorce and that's total turmoil. It's up in the air, everything. Uh, let's talk about that process a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that, that's one of my specializations in the firm. And so, yeah, we'll have clients that will come in. Uh, sometimes it's a couple and, you know, they don't want to have to, to get lawyers and get all sharky. And so they'll, they'll look for someone like myself to act as what we call a financial neutral, where I can help them divide up the assets, you know, fairly and equally without a lot of uh, conflict. And it saves them a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of headache. Uh, so that's one way. Sometimes it's just one of one's house. And so I'm helping them make sure that they're getting the best deal, uh, looking for, you know, money being hidden, things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, di different ways to approach that. And then ultimately, most of the time, those lead to financial planning engagements once the divorce is finished. Sure. So the, the divorce fee process is run through our tax firm uh, that's strict, strictly, you know, usually hourly or a, a project based. And then ultimately they'll, they'll, you know, whatever they're getting through the settlement IRAs or whatever, you know, we'll manage some of that money and do planning for them on an ongoing basis. Nice. We do, you know, just a handful a year. Uh, we haven't heavily marketed it. But uh, we'll get referrals and uh, sure. it's interesting work. It's, it's also yeah. you know, tough because there's a lot of emotions involved, but it yeah. is interesting work. It's certainly well needed. And I also noticed that you, you've uh, done work in charitable planning. You co-authored a book uh, on that subject. And, and how does that really fit into um, you know, the whole program that you have? Do clients well, want to do charitable planning? It, yeah, it, it, we do. I mean, obviously, I've got expertise in that, but that was really for my prior life. I was at one of the, the, the companies I was at, I was assigned to be the charitable planning guru. Mm -hmm. And that's why I ended up writing the, the, the book, et cetera. So, you know, charitable remainder trust and charitable lead trust and continuity, sure. and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. We, we, we do some of that. Our, most of our clients are just millionaire next door types. In my prior life, I was dealing with, you know, multimillionaires and sometimes billionaires. Now I'm just dealing with you know, average folk. Our typical client is maybe at 700000 to a million dollar portfolio. So they need some of that, but it's not at the same level where I was working before. I like working with the, the, the more typical client. I, it's, to me, it's more meaningful uh, to you know, have someone cry because they're going to be able to retire and do what they want versus, yeah, I just saved you an extra $15 million in the state. It's important, but it's not nearly as rewarding as, as helping someone retire or something like that. Sure. 
Well, good. Well, you have a very different background than some of the folks that have gotten in the industry. You started like trainees at a warehouse or whatever. So you've, you've had some experiences um, that brought you knowledge that many don't have. Um, so, so given your background, do you, do you think that's really helped you build a bigger and better practice than many? Yeah, I think, I think it has. Um, you know, a lot of it just comes with time and experience. But I, I think, you know, having all these various multiple credentials and, and uh, you know, gaining a lot of background in a bunch of different areas because I was required to be the technical expert. I, I definitely think it's helped me. I mean, maybe don't use all that technical expertise as much anymore, uh, but it's always there. And, you know, if we hit, run across a situation, I can pull it out. And, mm -hmm. and use it. So I'm just a strong believer in being a student of the profession. You know, learn throughout your whole career, never stop learning. Um, you know, one of my, my prior employers who had been at the company for 25 years, you know, he, he'd lost his skills. And it, I just vowed that I was never going to be like that, that I wasn't going to be you know, the out of touch guy who really couldn't do much anymore. So yeah. I just, I just focus on staying sharp. Yeah. So I know you do you do some referral work, obviously, you get referrals on divorce situations and things like that. Um, but do you do any other forms of marketing besides we do? We do uh, we do seminars. Uh, we do seminars primarily on social security. And you know, we do them at a community center or a library. And that's how I when I started back from scratch, that's how I got clients. And it's been pretty successful. So we'll still do uh, you know, we did a couple couple in May in Carlsbad and up here in the Orange County, and we'll do several more in the fall. So we do the seminars uh, probably for four to six a year. Uh, we also involved in the program Smart Asset, where they refer you leads uh, that they get, you know, they bet three professionals and send them all free. Uh, that's worked out fairly well. It's pretty new for us, but, uh, you know, we're in competition with firms like Fisher. And so, you know, they've got an army of people smiling and dialing <clears throat> but you know smart assets work pretty well for us but the bread and butter has been referrals it's, uh, yeah you know, I, I think people are really happy with this, the value we offer and uh, so uh, we've got a steady stream of referrals but yeah we, we we still market we've got some younger advisors some career changers and we want to have a stream of new potential clients for them yes and Jim I've also noticed of course you live in uh in a, a wonderful environment with the coastline and just the beautiful mountains and everything else. It's a great place to live. Uh, and you're pretty much of an outdoorsman. I understand. I am. I, I, I love hiking, trail running, paddle boarding, pretty much. I spend all my, my extra time outdoors. Um, nice. Yeah. You know, we're, we're fortunate. We have the desert, we have the beach, we have the mountains. Uh, so yeah. you know, we've got a lot of different opportunities and where I live in Orange County, I've got, hiking trails five minutes from my house. And so I spend, you know, three, four, five times a week, a couple hours out, outside doing something. Nice. That's great. And do you do uh, client events in outdoors as well, or is it just mostly? Yeah, I, I, actually, we do. We'll, we have uh, client hikes, like we'll, you know, easy ones, obviously. But, uh, yeah, we'll have a picnic area, and we'll, we'll do a lunch or a breakfast, and we'll have a guided hike. Um Next month we've got a pickleball tournament. First time we're trying that, um, but we're we have a, a rented a pickleball place uh, in Carlsbad, and uh, we're going to see how that that goes. But yeah, we we try and do several summer client activities, and then we we usually have client holiday parties as well. Um, right. Nice. Well, good. So you know we went through this um, series of bear markets and the same, and I but I'm in the industry of about as long as you right and uh but now we went through this weird pandemic and it really changed a lot of things did you see any permanent changes that happened to our industry or at least certainly seminal changes uh out of this whole pandemic environment yeah i would i would say that we do a lot more virtual meetings i mean i don't think we were doing much of anything prior to the pandemic okay uh, and now even local clients would just pop on a a Zoom and, and do a Zoom meeting. So I think that definitely changed. We've got a lot of clients that have moved out of state, you know, Dallas, Idaho, Reno, wherever. And so it's definitely helped us stay more in touch with our out-of-state clients. 
We don't necessarily have to go travel to, to visit them. So I think that's been a big change. And then, you know, we'll have our staff work from home every once in a while. We, you know, like everybody else, we were forced to during COVID and it just, it's worked out. You know, we don't have any clients coming to the office. We don't necessarily have to have anybody there. So a lot of people will, will just work remotely. I don't like that. I prefer to be in the office. If I, if I'm home, uh, my wife might put me to work doing chores. And so uh, I prefer to be in the office. But yeah, yeah. it's definitely opened right. up, uh, you know, clients nationwide in addition to lots of different ways to work. That's great. Well, good. So, Jim, so with all your experience, what do you see for the future? Are, are we are we going to recover from this divided country we have? And, and uh, are investors going to do well? Or is the debt going to kill our country? I mean, what do you see for the future? Yeah, I think we're, we're optimistic about the, the economy. Um, you know, again, I think it's, it's tuning out a lot of the a lot of the, the noise. But we think everything looks looks good um you know it's it's unfortunate that the country is divided as it is and i think a lot of it is you know social media and, and things like that uh, that you know kind of has, has wrecked community uh but yeah we're we're optimistic about the the future um you know there's gonna be some hurdles in california we're seeing a lot of fast food restaurants close because of, of you know, new minimum wage hikes and things like that. So there's going to be some bumps, but overall we're pretty optimistic and it's just a matter of, you know, making sure that what we're doing is in, in sync with what our clients' plans are. Very cool. So Jim, if you, if you were starting out again and you were, you could talk to your 25 year old self and get into the business, what would you, what would you say to somebody new that wanted to get into the business and, do and eventually achieve the things you've achieved. Yeah, so I would I would say the first thing is, if you want to be an advisor, you, you've got to hone your people skills. You know, people don't mm-hmm. necessarily these days don't have to go out and do what we had to do, which was like drum up clients, right? But uh, you know, you still have to have people skills. You still have to be able to communicate. So you know that that is an important consideration when we're adding staff. Uh, and then the other is like. A, I've said all along, be a student of the profession. Most of the people I've hired, I've, I've done that because they're involved in the profession. They're constantly learning. You know, they want to just absorb everything like a sponge. And I think that serves people well. Uh, this is a, a huge growing industry. And I think, you know, things are a lot easier career path wise than they were when we started. Uh, but you still have to have certain skills. You've got to, strong technical skills and you definitely have to have people skills excellent um let's turn to your firm so anchor bay uh you guys developed the firm and now Mm -hmm. anchor bay private wealth and um how many folks work there and tell us a little bit about that yeah so uh anchor bay capital is is our main ria uh it was started in 1992 by our founder who we subsequently uh, bought out Uh, Mm um So, you know, that's our our main RIA, SEC registered. We manage about $225 million. Um, And then we have Anchor Bay Private Wealth, which you mentioned, which is a new RIA, uh, which we're going to use for our our cleared investors. You know, maybe add occasional sleeve of alternatives or private granted or something like that. Uh, And then we have Anchor Bay Tax and Consulting, which is where we do all of our tax prep. We do all of our fiduciary services. Uh, I can serve as an executor or trustee or guardian of an estate, do a few of those a year, and then the divorce stuff. So those are kind of the three pillar firms. Uh, we have 11, 11 people total. Uh, we have four advisors, and then we have an in-house portfolio manager. We do all of our investing in-house. Uh, we don't outsource it, and we're using the individual securities for most clients. Uh, he has a research assistant, and then we have a couple ops people, and then we have our uh, event person. So, team of 11, uh, we're just adding a, a pair of planners starting September 1st, who will ultimately grow into a, a full advisor. And then we've got another advisor that, uh, again, a career changer. I like hiring career changers uh, who will join us full time uh, at the end of 2025. Nice. So, what, what does the future look like? 
for Anchor Bay and all the Anchor Bay companies? Are you going to yeah. start acquisitions or, or organic? Yeah, so we, uh, we, we've acquired a couple of small single person RIAs uh, and we acquired a tax practice and we're huge fans of adding the, the tax stuff to our, our value proposition. Uh, it makes the client stickier. We've been able to add tax clients for financial planning. So we likely will acquire another tax practice in the near future. Um, I, you know, when I joined, I had a succession plan for the founder. We completed that a couple of years ago. Uh, I am going to slowly start to wind down over the next three years. Um, probably not going to leave the business altogether because I love it. But uh, so we're currently working on my succession, which is the reason we're adding additional advisors, et cetera. I see. Okay. Um, very interesting. Well, good. So um, uh, as you succeed to uh, other folks and they run the firm, what does that look like? Are they going to keep it going in a similar fashion or do you think they might take it in a different direction? Um, no, I, I think, I think everybody at this point, my, my partners, et cetera, are all on board with the, the vision that we, we've got currently. Uh, so, you know, I, I think, who knows what will happen 10 years down the road. You know, the industry may look totally different. But I think we're going to kind of continue with uh, the status quo. We're going to keep adding advisors, mainly to service our existing clients. We'll keep marketing the way we're doing. Um, you know, my niche is, is baby boomers. And then we have advisors who are niching with Gen Xers. And then we have a couple of much younger advisors that are hopefully building up the, you know, the next generation after that. So, uh you know, we're just trying to make sure that, uh, you know, the company stays around for a very long time and that, uh, you know, we've got the client base to continue to have it uh, grow. Yes. Well, great. Well, it sounds sounds like a great plan. Hope it, hope it all works exactly the way you hope. Um, you know, when you when you look at advisors to maybe join your firm, what kind of people are you looking for when you've done that? Yeah, so... Um, what we're we're mainly looking for isn't someone to come in and be a rainmaker. We're looking for people to service our existing clients, and you know maybe maybe they bring in some of their own clients. Like I said, you know we we have the seminars, we have smart asset, we have a, a steady referral stream. So we just look for people that have good people skills, strong technical skills, which we can support with a team approach. But uh, you know we just want people to keep our clients, current clients, happy. Uh, and, you know, hopefully get their children and grandchildren, et cetera. So we're not necessarily looking for someone to, to be a rainmaker. Um, I can hopefully do that for the next several years still. Uh, we definitely have a client base that we've grown mm -hmm. so much that we just need people to kind of act as servicing advisors at this point. Nice. So our typical nice. career path is maybe they start as a para planner. Um, start introducing them to our, our clients, getting them familiar with our processes. They move into a servicing advisor and you know, they can always add their own book of business if they, they wish. Right, nice. Well, good. Well, well, Jim, we're coming to the end of our, our visit here today. And I just wanted to thank you for being part of this. And, and um, you know, if you can think of now, we've got, you've got the floor. Uh, obviously, you know, we're a few hundred advisors are gonna hear this. Um, message and hear the see the videos perhaps on YouTube, and then uh, you know next next couple of years a few thousand advisors and maybe a few clients. So imagine they're all in a big auditorium, and uh, you can you're talking to them right now. Uh, what kind of message would you like to send to that whole group about uh, the future of the business and the industry and and success in the industry? Yeah, I I think the future is extremely bright. I mean it, it's. You know, it, the profession is, is getting mature enough that people know what it is and people are looking for it. Um, and I think it's, you know, if anything, we're probably going to be forced to add more and more uh, services to, you know, our platform. Um, you know, investment management alone probably isn't going to cut it. There's just too much competition for that. But conference and financial planning, tax, estate planning, all of those kind of things, um, you know, Ultimately, I think everybody's going to have to offer those. Right now, they're not table stakes, but I think they will be in just a few years. Yeah. Excellent. Well, good. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jim, for being with us. Um, you've had great success. 
And I think we learned, all learned a lot from how you built it and, and how you developed it. And, and we wish you well as they continue to grow it and you succeed out. Um, but um, we have all learned a lot and we appreciate your being part of the show today. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Enjoyed it. All right. And thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, that's it for the Financial Advisors Workshop for today. We're going to come back again with another great financial advisor that we can all learn from and uh, make our industry better and better and the individual practitioners better and better, which is the whole point. So um, this is the Financial Advisors Workshop for today. Uh, over and out. Thanks, everybody.